Painting skies can be so much fun, especially when you can get a handle on the timing that's needed to paint the clouds and get a variety of soft and hard edges. So today, I'm gonna walk you through painting this sky scene and show you how I work through some issues along the way. I'm getting the sponge pretty wet and I'm gonna wet the back of the paper and then the front. I'm not taping my paper down, I'm using the, um, the wetness of the paper to just kind of stick to my table here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this light, warm wash with raw sienna and a little bit of lavender. And I'm gonna work around some of these white areas in my clouds. And what I know about this sky is that these white areas are gonna be the whitest parts of the painting. So everything else around can be darker. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. I didn't mean to do that much. Just get some more water. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of rose matter permanent. And I'm kind of going around the painting and preserving a few of the whites, realizing that those are going to be the whitest parts of my painting. Okay, I'm, I'm neutralizing it a little with this lavender. I don't, I want it to be warm, but not vibrant yellow. There's all kinds of subtle value changes happening in these clouds. And I like to add them in when it's soft. I don't want hard edges up here. That's why I wet the whole paper. and add a little bit of neutral tint. So we're darkening this as we go. I'm gonna change the angle of my table just slightly. It's flowing down a little too much. When you look at these clouds, they're so complicated. There's so many little shapes. So it's easier to kind of squint at it and do some random brush strokes. If you try to paint it exactly like it is, you're gonna go crazy and it's just not gonna happen. Okay, so I'm just kind of finishing some of this off. It's not gonna be as bright as it is up here. And you might wonder, how in the world is this gray, yellow mess going to turn into what we want it to be? Well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I try to remove any little loose hairs that get on my painting if I can. I have a lot of water in my palette right now. I'm going to take a paper towel and get some of this off of here. Okay, so this water down here, you can go ahead and, I guess I will try to preserve that boat there. Go all the way down to the bottom of the paper. We're gonna come back over this later. So I'm seeing that I need to start putting in some of these darker shadow values. I'm gonna take some neutral tint
Less water this time. Still pretty wet wash, but less water than what we were doing last time. Neutral tint and lavender. And I'm still working on some of these variation of shapes. It's good in watercolor to take advantage of this wet into wet effect. I'm referencing areas of my photo, but I'm not doing exactly as is. Okay. Need a little more lavender neutral tint. Something important to remember is in watercolor, the more water you use, the lighter it'll dry. That main cloud has some darkness to it. needed a little bit more. It's okay that it's blooming and kind of doing what it wants to do. I'm just here to kind of guide it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move into some blues. You can wipe off what we have on our palette. Okay, clean my brush. All right, so one thing to remember about skies is the higher up you're looking in the sky, the darker blue it is. If you look down into the middle, that's more middle blue, and then down towards the bottom, it's even lighter blue, and all the colors kind of run together. So I want my darker blue up higher in the painting. So some of these edges are um, drying up, which is actually kind of nice because I want to get a little bit of crisper edges on parts of these clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up my blue, a lot of cobalt. And this brush holds a lot of water, so I'm going to need a lot of paint. Put some cerulean in it. Some neutral tint. You want to go pretty dark on this top part of the sky. Let's see how that looks. I think it looks pretty good. One thing that's so easy to do when you're painting, when you're negatively painting these clouds, is to make, keep painting and painting and they get smaller and smaller. So be careful. Leave yourself a lot a lot of room. Let's see how this is. Good. Got a little bit of a different edge there, which is what I was wanting.
I like the variety of edge I'm already getting there. Soft, hard. I'm going to reload my brush. And I can already tell I didn't mix enough paint, so keep that in mind too. The paper is still a little wet. That's going to help smooth out some of these washes. Go back, cobalt blue, cerulean, neutral tint. Okay, I want to look at some of these harder edges that I'm getting. Are there any of them that I want to keep? It's tempting to keep all of them, but that's not what you want to do. Paint down to here. See, the, the paper's still wet. It's, it's blending it nice and smoothly down here. Keep working the, the wet edge. I'm gonna let some of this dry a little bit more. And we'll go back in there in a minute. That's about as far down as I wanna go with this dark blue. I think I, I need to use a little bit more water and add some more cerulean and maybe even some cobalt teal light to switch it up a little. We could probably already do that. Add a little bit of cobalt teal light, more water. And that's what we're gonna do as we keep moving down the paper. I don't want the same value that I have up here down in the middle of the sky. So one thing that you want to look for is, are there parts where you're being repetitive? Right now I have four similar size cloud shapes all in the same area and that can't work. Um, so I know that I want to come down more in the middle of the sky. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I need to eliminate one, now I gotta decide. I think it's gonna have to be this, even though I like that brush stroke. Just make it different. They can't all be the same. It's something we always have to think about when we're painting. Okay, um, so That's better. As we're doing this, you're going to need to constantly pay attention to what's happening on the paper here. And where, what kind of edge you're gonna get, according to how dry it is, how much water you have on your brush. Always trying to make it random. I like what's happening though. I think the colors are looking nice together. Uh, we can go ahead and try and determine. Okay, I can. I see a white edge here that I kind of want to leave. I don't want to overdo this. I'm going to suggest the complexity of this group of clouds down here.
It's not bad. I feel like I need some darker blue here. I went light in that area. Neutral tint, cobalt blue, cerulean. While I'm painting, I'll put a little scrap piece of paper next to my painting. And if I have too much paint on my brush, I can get some off or I can just see what kind of mark I'm going to make before I actually make it on my painting. Because you really don't have a second shot at it. You gotta get it right. I don't wanna get too involved here, but this is kind of the focal point or the main cloud of this um, painting. Looking at the overall shape of it, I'm not sure what I think. It, it needs something. With a damp brush, I can go back in and I can define some of these areas. I feel like I need a little more value at the top. Now I got one, two, three, four, five pieces that are all kind of the same. This is exactly what I was talking about when I was saying it's tempting to keep cutting around your clouds and eventually they disappear. It just seemed to need a few more random shapes. Now it's a little too, um, <laughs> I'm just chiseling away at it. I'll just see how it goes. Be a few more little edges around that you want to define. I'm going to take a smaller synthetic brush, a little bit of neutral tint, and some of my. Uh, let's do a little cobalt teal light. I'm looking for just some of these grays. It, it all seems a little flat right now. So I need some darks under some of these clouds to define them a little better. And soften some of these edges with a damp brush. I think that this might actually need some of that. Let's just try it. Uh, 
Um, let's see, I'm going to take kind of a middle size brush, some more neutral tint. The green in that shadow is kind of nice. And as I get away from that main underside of the cloud, I can use more water. That actually brought that forward a little bit, which I think helps. Take my small synthetic brush again and smooth out some of these edges. Soften. I'm going to soften some of these edges. Again, I can probably put a little darker under here to, to um, bring this cloud forward a little bit. Oh man, didn't mean to grab that much paint. That was not what I wanted. Let's see, what were we using? Oh, a little bit of Cobalt teal light. Some cobalt. Neutral tint. Yeah, I think that's what it needed. It's okay to add a few little darker areas around so these don't stand out so much. That's kind of nice. Has a little more definition to these. This part seems a little off. Get a little paint off my brush. That's better.
think that's it for the clouds. So painting skies is so much fun, but it does require a lot of practice and a lot of understanding of the timing of watercolor. So if you can't think of what to paint or you just want to improve at skies, take some time to practice this aside from doing a finished painting. Because the more practice you get, the more repetition you get, and the timing and understanding the, your consistency of paint, the better that you're gonna be able to paint skies. And I wanted to mention, if you haven't seen my free video lesson, Eight Tips to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below, or you can get to it in my bio on Instagram. I've gotten some great feedback from this video lesson, and it's been very helpful to solve a big problem that I have had to deal with, and that is overworking your painting. So I hope that you found today's video helpful. Keep practicing, keep moving forward, and I'll see you next time.